What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. So it's 6.59 in the morning. I'm about to leave in one minute. Mimi's about to take me to the airport and I'm headed down to El Paso, Texas for a playoff game. Um, yeah, as soon as Mimi's out of the bathroom, we're gonna head to the airport. So unfortunately, there's not that many uh, direct flights from Tulsa to other cities, so we can't just fly straight from Tulsa to El Paso. That would be just probably a very easy two-hour flight, three-hour flight. Um, unfortunately, we have to fly into Dallas, have like a two-hour layover, and then fly into El Paso. So in total, we should have like a, a six, seven-hour travel day, which isn't too bad, but uh, it's just frustrating because El Paso is really not that far, but it's going to be a longer day because of it. Dario, how so, many? How many goals? You wanna post in, in your, in your social media yes. or change the last time? No, no, no. I'm gonna post two tomorrow. Okay, two tomorrow. Let's cool. get it. How many for you? Zero. No, no. I'm definitely getting more goals and assists than you in that one game tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's alright. I'll, I'll just stall. I'll stall. Just shut up, you dairy man. Just... Shut up. <laughs> Record that. I know. Hey, Rafa, <laughs> the, the Oracle. Okay, just got into the hotel in El Paso. Um, got the nice king size or queen size bed. I'm not sure what size that is. I think that's a queen. Um, that's the one thing that's better. Hold on, let me put down my stuff. That's the one positive that comes out of the full coronavirus is that um, well, with all the new restrictions and everything, we no longer can have roommates in the hotel room. So it's kind of nice to always have your own room and your own space for these trips. Uh, right now it is 2.07 in the afternoon, just getting in. Um, we have to leave here at 3 p.m. So we basically get like 50 minutes to unpack, get settled in a little bit. I'm gonna eat a little bit of the food that I just got from, the, uh, from our little team room. And then I'm just going to change my training gear head back out for training. Okay, it is 2.50. I'm just getting ready to head down to the lobby to leave for our training session. It's gonna be a very typical pregame training, which is kind of pretty much always the same. We do rondos, we do a warm up, and we do like some sort of possession drill. And then we go into more of a tactical with our starting lineup and kind of work on building out the back or front press or whatever we kind of really want to um, focus on before we head in the game. Then we finish with some corner kicks and then maybe stay after and do a little bit of crossing and finishing or long balls or whatever you want to work on. So in total, it should be short and sharp. It's going to be right in the middle of the, uh, the, the day of the heat. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit hot, but it'll be okay. Let's, uh... What's the matter? Matt Sheldon has a tiny head. <laughs> Sure that work. Tomorrow is the big day. It's a big day. Okay, just getting back from training. It was hot. It was really hot. I haven't trained at like 3 p.m. in a while, so that was that was pretty tough. Like nine degrees outside, wasn't used to it. Um, but it was good, super short, sharp. We even did a little bit less than I thought. Um, we did a little bit less tactical stuff and just kind of played and just kind of like more of a get the get the plane ride and get the day of travel out of our legs. Just go out there, play, play some possession, do that kind of stuff. So really good. Um, what time is it? 5.30, it's 5.30 right now. Dinner is in an hour, so I'm going to shower relax a little bit, and then uh, get ready for that. Now let's do it. Uh, I got like 40 minutes until dinner. Uh, I've been watching this like Netflix show um, that I really, really like. What's it called? It's uh, basically where coaches kind of give life lessons about whether it's coaching, sports, or just like life in general. And it's really good. Hold on, let me find what it's called. 
it's called the playbook and like the first episode is with like doc rivers the nba coach but there's also like jose Mourinho and then other soccer coaches and tennis coaches and basketball coaches are just on here and so far i've only seen the first one so far and i really really like it i mean it's just it's kind of like everything from how to approach sports how to approach coaching how to approach life how to approach like just any life lessons i really like it so i'm going to finish up that first one with doc rivers right now hang out for a bit and then i'll head down for dinner all right gonna head up to our team room for dinner no idea what we're having but i'm starving so i'm excited let's do it Hello. oh you're talking about when i season my food yeah. oh you just put a little salt yeah. Lebo. what's up no don't you throw some raisins in there salty, don't. <laughs> He blows, blows fresh breeze on his food. <laughs> That's the seasoning. <laughs> okay, so we had dinner. It was a really good dinner, actually. Had a, a nice soup, had some salad, had like pasta with a marinara sauce, like a salmon filet, chicken filet, asparagus, broccoli, sweet potatoes, and then like a little peanut butter and jelly uh, if we wanted it as like extra food as well. So. Pretty much ate all of that. I'm <laughs> pretty stuffed right now, but feeling good. Um, and then afterwards, I kind of went up to Callum's room, hung out with Callum for a little bit, just talked. And then uh, now I'm back in my room and it's eight o'clock, eight o'clock at night. Uh, I'm honestly feeling a little tired because this is like, we're an hour behind. So it's like nine o'clock for me back in Tulsa, um, which is still sad. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm like 80 years old. And to top that off, to make it even more, more funny, um, I'm also drinking my little herbal tea right now with no caffeine at all. So drinking some tea. And then a thing that I've been doing lately as well, just to try to optimize my sleep and my performance as much as I possibly can, I'm, uh, I'm reading. So I picked up, uh, this book Dune, which is like kind of like a sci-fi space book, which is right up my alley, which I love. I'm really liking it, but I've been trying to read like every night. For like the hour before I go to bed because usually like I'm a, a pretty typical person I watch TV I'm on my phone or I'm my, on my computer and I'm doing that up until the minute I go to bed and it's just not ideal so I've been trying to read and like get my eyes away from a screen just constantly especially as I'm headed to bed but anyway I'll read for like an hour I'll drink my herbal tea and then I'll probably go to bed around 9 p.m. El Paso time nice little breakfast with the team at 9 30 this morning it was like eggs bacon toast some cereal fruit um coffee whatever you kind of wanted i like to have a really big breakfast like i've talked about on game days have a big breakfast small lunch and then a very tiny snack maybe right before the game so i kind of like that's what i like to do and it's funny we were talking about our kind of game day meals um just with my table when we're eating breakfast and everybody does something differently. Some people don't even like to have breakfast and they just have a, a medium sized lunch and some people do what I do and other people do the opposite where they like to have like a smaller breakfast and then a, maybe a bigger lunch. It's just very interesting how different everybody is but yet we've all found something to work for us and to help us perform the best on the pitch. But another thing that we were kind of talking about at breakfast was um, just about this game tonight and, and how crazy it is being a playoff game in a single game elimination and just how like you really don't know when your last training is going to be or when your last game is going to be until it's already over so we we're kind of talking about how you really have to enjoy the moment because like yesterday our training session that could have been our last training session of the season our last training session with all of these guys and this tonight could be our last game I mean, if we lose, our season's over. And we literally, then we maybe have a couple exit interviews and then everybody leaves and goes home for off season. So you really have to enjoy it like, and work incredibly hard to not make it your last week of training and not make it your last game. But I wanna say this now before anything happens tonight, um, regardless of what happens, regardless if we win 3-0, we tie and we go to penalties, or if we lose 1-0, we lose 5-0 or whatever. I mean, I just think that I'm just so proud of this organization and this team and, and everybody involved with this club because for what we've done this year and turning this club and rebranding this club into a new FC Tulsa and really went from being a team that's bottom of the table to now a team that's into playoffs pretty securely and, and, 
and winning and winning the wrench now against Oklahoma City Energy. It's just very cool to see how quickly things turn around and how many people and how many, you know, scouts or analysts or whatever kind of doubted us. It's very cool to see that um, we just had a pretty successful year. And I mean, you want to go as far as you possibly can. And I want to win tonight so badly and just keep on playing and keep on training and keep on performing. But even if we are to lose tonight, you know, I, I'm going to be com just devastated. But looking back on it, I know I'm going to be very proud of this year, both individually and for the team and for the full organization. So, and I think, you know, it's funny is we had this promotional video that our club or our media guys made, and I think it sums it up really, really well, um, which I'll play right now. They said we couldn't do it. We did. They said we couldn't turn it around in one year. We did. They said we couldn't win the wrench. <laughs> we did. They even said we couldn't make the playoffs. Well, we did that too. And now, they're wondering if they're even ready. We are. There's Ariel Martinez. the goal and then the tap in for Dario Suarez. And just where are the limits to this club? That message of the video, even though it's just like a promotional video to get hype for this this playoff game, I mean it's so important that message of like, you know, everybody said that we're gonna be the same Tulsa team and we're not gonna change and there's no way these guys are gonna make playoffs and they're not gonna win against their rivals in the derby matches. It's just very cool to see that we proved a lot of people wrong. And I think that this year is a very pivotal year and hopefully this club continues to build and build and build for the next, you know, next decade. And it's just gonna be exciting to see. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm just so excited for tonight. Um, I'm just gonna chill for a little bit longer Unfortunately now, I mean, it's only like 11 o'clock in the morning, so I got a long time before kickoff, but I'm just going to try to distract myself with some Netflix shows, read a little bit, hang out, and then try not to, <laughs> try not to get too excited too early. Okay, it's like 2.25 right now. I'm just going to, going to head up to the team room because we have a little team meeting and team lunch. Um, the team meeting is basically just film. We're just going to watch uh, like El Paso play, kind of go over any like final tactical things that we want to talk about, even though this entire week we've been kind of like talking about them, watching the film, um, working on our formations and our pressing and everything. But this is kind of like the final reminder of like to ingrain like the, the little last talking points before we, before we play El Paso. Um, shouldn't take too long. It's usually about 30 minutes of watching film and talking and discussing things and then uh, about a 30 minute lunch. And then we're back up here to, uh, to chill some more before the, uh, before the game starts. So I'm gonna head out right now. Ah, my mask, I forgot my mask. Okay, so it is five o'clock, which means I'm gonna hop in the shower, shave, start to get ready, get all cleaned up, and I'll put on my travel gear, pack my bag, head down to the lobby and then go off to uh, off to the stadium to play. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I've had like butterflies this whole day pretty much off and on, kind of like it comes and goes, I start thinking about the game or something and then I just start getting that, that pit in my stomach. And it's a weird balance of, of kind of like accepting that and, and using the butterflies and like the nervousness and the anxiousness to kind of motivate you to have a good game and to really push yourself when you play, but at the same time calming down taking a deep breath and, and not getting too nervous where I'm going to have like a bad performance because of it. So it's a weird, a weird feeling, but yeah, it's exciting. All right, I'm gonna hop in the shower and then I'll head down.
USL Championship playoff soccer back in El Paso. Making it difficult for the center backs of FC Tulsa. Floated over the top, Yuma looking for Carrijo. Bounced down and Carrijo will score. Kevin Garcia thinking Sean Lewis is staying in goal and he's just going to be able to head it back to him for an easy cleanup. And Sean Lewis. In the middle, Martinez. Sent in, crossing, loose, and Ketera could not keep it. It is spilled in, and a tying goal by the Costa. Baloto's well, going to be a, a bit disappointed with himself, the quality of player that he is. Up high, lifted down and in. Ketera came out to play. Not getting anywhere near it. Well off the mark to that cross. And Chapman paid with the cheeky nutmeg. Maris into Ryan. Shot parried up and over. To keep it down on frame. Kamata Mirano and serving a great ball to the back post. Maris into the middle. Carrijo! With pace. And Leandro Carrillo just doing enough to redirect it towards that back post. Nothing Sean Lewis can do about that. Nice feed. Gomez to bring it down. Gomez off the crossbar again. Ross did it earlier. La Costa. And that is that. We are tied at two. Gomez looking for Borelli. Borelli left side. It'll bounce to Ross. Gomez again. Winding up. Has it go? Off the crossbar for a third time tonight. My goodness. Second time for Gomez. A red card issue. It's a straight red, straight to the back pocket. The deep throw in. FC Tulsa content to play it all. Uzo in the box. The shot deflected wide, and that's it. We are going to penalties. 2-2. Two -two. Parried away. Ketterer stops it. And send Locomotive FC through to the next round. He can! Locomotive FC will host New Mexico United. Redemption for Logan Ketterer. Locomotive FC survives and advances. That was a, a pretty tough game. It's a tough, it's a tough way to lose. Um, penalties are just unforgiving. They're, you, you have a love-hate relationship with penalties. I mean, I've won playoff games with penalties, and I felt the feeling of winning and celebrating immediately, and now I've been on the opposite side, and I've lost in penalties, and it's not a, a fun way to go out. You just kind of wish almost that you could play them again and like be like an aggregate, but unfortunately, single elimination is, is pretty tough. Um, at the same time, like I know that I'm going to look back on the season and like everything that we've done this year and, and have very fond memories of this year and just be so proud of this team in general and myself, how I played this season. Um, it definitely was the best team that I've ever been a part of. And um, yeah, I'm just going to uh, really cherish um, – this whole year, I mean, every year has its ups and downs. I mean, this year, especially with the coronavirus and all the adversity that come along with that. But yeah, for the most part, this was a very, very good year and a good season. I'm just so proud of um, all the guys and and everybody, even with this last game. I mean, that kind of summed it up, just never quitting, always pushing, continue to fight, even a man down, just... Um, yeah, I'm just really proud. I, I don't know what else to say, to be honest. It's a, it's a weird feeling because, I mean, so much of the sadness that I'm feeling um, after the game in the locker room and then right now is, is 
honestly because you just don't want it to end. You just want to keep showing up to team training. You want to keep on being with the guys. You want to keep on competing and keep on winning games together. So I think that's why, um, I think that's where all the sadness is coming from. Not, not so much of the loss. It's more of just realizing that um, this is the end of, of the season. But I think that, that sums it up. I mean, like I said, uh, it, you just feel so sad right now because um, you just don't want it to end. And uh, God, I can't even, can't even get this out. Um, you just don't want it to end. And unfortunately, you know, it, it ended. <laughs>